what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel we finally got our rear turbo back from pure so we'll be unboxing this taking a look at it do a quick inspection make sure everything's good with this and then we can get started uh, or continue part two of this uh, turbo install on the 135 so let's get this open let's take a look at it and then i'll show you the steps on preparation for install um it's not just you know grab the turbos put them on no, there's a few things that we got to check make sure the wastegates are operating properly we've got a simple hand vacuum pump right here uh, which i'll show you how to use and measure on uh, whether or not your wastegates are going to be functioning properly so let's get to it Perfect. So we got the turbo back from Pure. Uh, this is the rear turbo here. Um, the issue that we had was this wastegate was was getting stuck. You saw in the previous video, I would go to you know push this in, and it wasn't. It was just getting stuck. So it was binding. Um, it looks like they just did a little repair on here. Maybe bent it back in place but it's working now. So the first thing I do, uh, anytime I get new turbos, we got our front and rear here. This is gonna be for any turbo manufacturer, whether you have Franken's, whether you have 17 T's, you know, eBay specials, 19 T's, pure turbos, pure 600s, high flows. Uh, DAW, whatever the turbo is that you have, um, in order uh, for these turbos to work properly, there's a reading um, that you want to have here. So we're measuring, we're measuring here on the left side of the needle is going to be uh, inch inches in mercury. So. You want your wastegate to be closed at about five and a half to six inches in mercury. Um, that's the standard setting for M54 for when these turbos, you know, you give it the gas, mash it, whatever, your wastegate closes to build boost. It's going to need five inches in mercury in order for that to work properly. So I'll show you. This is just a simple, it's a simple, a, uh, uh, what's it called? Blue point. Here's the part number if anyone wants to get it. YA4000B is in Bravo. And all this is is a handheld vacuum pump. So if you cover this, you start pumping, you see it starts creating vacuum. If you let go of it, it releases pressure. So. We'll hook this up right here to the wastegate actuator, like so. Then we'll come down here and I'll try to zoom in for you, but basically as we start pumping it, you can see the wastegate start closing. So right when it closes, see I can still spin the wheel. Right there, we have a little bit of tension. So that's seated right there. Here's where we are. We are at about six inches in mercury. So this rear, uh, this is gonna be the rear turbo that one's set up properly. No adjustments needed. Make sure that you're tight. Make sure your locking nut is tight. That turbo is good. Or 
or this wastegate is good, I should say. Now we'll do the front turbo. Same thing, we'll hook up our vacuum line to the wastegate actuator. Make sure that we're not resting on the wastegate arm. Start pumping. Right there, we're closed. Same thing with this, we're at about six inches in the mercury. So we're good. Disconnect that. And that's all you gotta do to test, uh, to test that the wastegates are set properly. It just so happened that on these turbos, they were set properly. But once again, I've seen eBay turbos, I've seen Pures, I've seen DAW, uh, where they do not come adjusted. So anytime you're installing new turbo, always make sure that you do this, otherwise your car is not going to be running properly. You'll have laggy boost, uh, incorrect boost, you'll have overworking of your wastegate duty cycle, um, your, tuner, your tuner will see that and it is noticeable in the logs. So just remember to always do this adjustment. All right, so next step guys, uh, over here we've got our water jacket, we've got our heat shields, we've got some coolant feed lines and some coolant uh, return lines here. What I'm gonna do is take out the gaskets, uh, clean out the surface of the parts, remove all these O-rings um, and replace them with brand new O-rings so that we have these parts ready to go in. guys so we got our water jacket cleaned we have all of our coolant lines cleaned up here and we've got some brand new o-rings to put on along with our water jacket uh, gasket we'll get that put on set that aside and then we'll transfer the lines from the turbos to the new turbos from the old turbos to the new turbos So we've got our rear turbo here. This is our old turbo. The way I pull them off with these lines in place is how I'm gonna put the new ones in. So we're gonna remove our oil drain line, clean this off, put new O-rings on it, and the same thing with our oil return here. We are going to, or our oil feed, we are going to take this off, clean it out, put the new gaskets on, and transfer these to the new turbo. That way, when it's time to put them in, these lines are already in place. So you just throw the turbo on with these lines in place.
right, so one thing I like doing personally, uh, before putting this oil feed line on top, I've got a little uh, squirter here with some breaking oil. And I'll just put some right in there. Just so it doesn't start up dry. Okay, rear turbo all complete. So here's where we're at now. Both rear and front turbos are prepped. Lines are on them. New O-rings are on. Our coolant pipe is ready to go. And our coolant lines are also ready to go. All right, down here on the black, uh, we've got everything ready. We're going to throw some brake cleaner on here, clean off the the head uh, one preventative thing I always do while doing this job you'll see right here there's two filters one on the top one on the bottom I'll remove those clean them out uh, since it's easier to get to it now than with everything assembled um, and then we'll go ahead and throw our studs on the head we'll get our uh, front coolant line up there or the rear I should say and then the front one in here and then we can start putting in our turbos
rear turbo is on, fully secured, torqued 20 newton meters on these uh, copper nuts. We're tightened on on the uh, coolant lines. We have our drain line tightened up. So now we can move to the front turbo. Okay, we got front turbo on, rear turbo on. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and put this uh, water jacket on. Before I do that, I think I'm gonna get the uh, I'm gonna get the rear inlet in place, so I have it all set up. All right, so I went ahead and placed the rear inlet, slid it through the bottom around here. I'm going to go ahead and slide a uh, clamp over that, slide it in place, tighten it up, and then uh, we can go ahead and do our coolant pipe, water pump. We'll put the front inlet on as well, and then get everything buttoned up here. Okay, rear inlet is tightened down, attached. We'll go ahead and bring our uh, coolant pipe here. Actually, I gotta, I gotta figure out this here. Put our coolant pipe next.
Okay, turbos are in, rear turbos in, everything's hooked up, all the lines are tightened down. Same thing with the front, we got our coolant lines hooked up, main oil line hooked up, all these lines are tightened, so we are good there. Next step, we've already got our uh, rear inlet on, so I'm gonna put some uh, heat wrap around this uh, silicone area since it sits pretty close to the manifold. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put our front and then on right now. Then after that, I believe uh, we'll go ahead and put the water pump on with uh, the thermostat. We may need to make some modifications uh, to the coolant line since I'm rerouting the uh, coolant tank to the uh, driver's side. So we will uh, do all this next. We can go ahead and put our gaskets on, uh, put our engine mount on, put our downpipes connect to the exhaust, and then we can go ahead and start putting our subframe back in, connect the suspension, and finish everything else from the top. So we're up top now. I got the rear turbo vacuum line connected to the boost solenoid. Um, and then I got the front turbo also routed through here, connected to the front boost solenoid. Uh, we are deleting the vacuum canisters. So I just rerouted the vacuum lines for the two boost solenoids. They are plugged directly in to these hard lines that run across here. Now that we have that all set up, we can come over here and we have, um, using our stock outlet pipe, we're going to go ahead and throw on a new O-ring for the intercooler side and then I got two new ones uh, for right there and right there.
so here's where we're at right now we got down pipes on they are loose we got our gaskets in connected to the exhaust we got our water pump on i didn't put the thermostat on yet because we're gonna go up top we're gonna we're gonna have to do some modification some cutting to this line to be able to reroute the cooler reservoir to the driver's side so we'll go up top for now and then finish up the bottom later all right so let me explain what we're doing here so that was that was plugged in there and this little piece is what was plugged into the thermostat and then this would run up to the coolant uh, reservoir. So what I did was I disconnected it from there, unplugged it, and we're going to cut off this one-time use clip right here. And we're gonna use this 90 degree at the end of this hose, and this is gonna plug in directly to our thermostat. That way, we can try and use this piece here on the coolant uh, reservoir and then tee off onto a heater hose or something. So that's the plan for that.
All right, so we're gonna end the video here. Um, we got a little snag. This uh, upper nipple and the upper hose here just disintegrated. Went to go put this piece right there and it just fell apart. So, gotta wait, order a new uh, upper hose and then we can uh, get back on it. But uh, the tank has been relocated, made some adjustments. I've got the rear heater hose going around the tank, which goes all the way to the back firewall. And then I've got this piece here, which is going up here to this piece, which we're gonna swap out tomorrow. All we gotta do is put our uh, subframe on on the bottom, put our thermostat, connect our lower coolant hose, intercooler on, and tighten up the suspension, fill it with fluids, and then we can start her up and she'll be good to go. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's gonna wrap up part three of this pure turbo install on this 135 we we're working on. Um, as you saw in the previous clip, we hit a little snag, um, you know, old coolant parts, plastic pieces, they break, it's expected. Should have one here tomorrow. Hopefully we can wrap up this thing by tomorrow night. Um, with that being said, um, just wanna give you guys a quick update on my personal car. Uh, as many of you know, the one that I started the channel with, uh, this thing's been sitting for a couple years now. Um, and the plan with this car is to get it ready for TX2K coming up in March, March 20th, I believe. Um, we're gonna have a built motor going in this thing with a dock race kit and a Zona Rota turbo attached to that dock race kit. Uh, I went with the 11569S, uh, so pretty big Zona there. Um, We'll see how she does. Obviously custom tune, port injection, you know, full bolt on. Uh, it is a manual car, all wheel drive. So should be fun. I think we'll definitely um, be racing some other E9X chassis cars down there. Hopefully some American muscle, you know, we're gonna try and just gap what we can. So here's the E92. Uh, the one that broke the 60 to 130 record with the MMPs and this thing is probably going back to stock do maybe a little refresh motor or um, Just throw a used motor in it. I don't know um, But the plan with this one is just put it back to stock sell it, you know, get what I can for it um, There's no need for me to have this many E9X cars I've already got my daily over here as you know project 335 this thing is running absolutely beautiful um, just got some tint work done to it nothing crazy a little 50 percent tint um, and yeah i'm gonna do some more maintenance items still waiting for more suspension parts i did get the front bill stains in and uh waiting on rear subframe bushings and rear suspension pieces and then we can get going on that thing but I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. You guys have a good night. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, this was part three of the Pure Turbo install on the 135. Have a good one.